Some people think it's not Christmas till the, this card comes. So they're going to their mailbox in rural Vermont or Connecticut or Pennsylvania. And then the holiday starts once they open our card. And there are people that look forward to it. It's people that are like little old ladies who are 90 years old will send me notes saying it's my favorite card. I saved every one. I've been back to Ireland and people have said, I have your card on the telly. That's a lot of fun, a little bit of pressure, but <laughs> I guess we're, we're in it. And on one hand, we're, we're pretty ordinary, normal, conventional family people, but we have a collection of um, space age artifacts. So I don't think we'd want to be portrayed as being too wiggy. Don't worry. <laughs> it's too late for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. That's funny. <laughs> my name's John Kleeman, and with my son Peter and with the support of my wife Veronica, we collect dreams of the future in outer space. We collect space toys, we collect space age advertising, space age costumes, space age lighting fixtures, furniture, everything we can think of that tells the story of how people dreamed of the future during the 1930s through the 1980s, we collected. It started as a father-son hobby in, uh, in the mid-80s. It, it felt like that scene early on in Close Encounters of the Third Kind when he's scratching the mashed potato mountains and he's saying, like, this means something, this is important. These are actually a little bit harder to find. Now that could be a hiker. One of the things I love about, ab ab about license plates is they have more than one meaning. It's a person telling the unknown highway drivers, people they never know, this is my passion. In seven letters or less, this is what I care about. During the Mercury program and, and then later during Gemini and Apollo, I think people really felt proud. And when the plaque that the astronauts planted on the moon said, you know, we, we come in peace for all mankind, uh, or even one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, I think people really took that to heart. I think they felt this is something that is being done by all of us. There was a time when I was wondering, what are we doing? And, and I reflected on it. And it occurred to me that some of the pieces reminded me of the shards from archaeology. And there it is. The velveteen rabbit of spacecraft. It had a nice big dorsal fin. It had a tail fin. All gone. This is what it once looked like. And somebody riveted it together on the two fins here, 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 and here. And some father or brother or uncle or mother or aunt really worked it to uh, serve as a substitute for the original. And suddenly that made it special. And through play, there is this concept of participation in which these toys take on something more significant than just entertainment playthings. Uh, it really reflects the adventure that we're all on, that we're hurtling through the universe and that we're moving towards a future, and that part of that future may be that we leave this planet. You know, I think Peter and I hope, and Veronica too, that someday, somewhere off on a space station, there'll be some little offshoot satellite of Space Age Museum, and that people will wander around and they'll think, you know, gee, that's where we came from. We have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. 